Welcome to my channel. My name is Priska and I make videos for women who value their personal style over fashion. In today's video, I'm honoring a request from my lovely subscribers who have asked for a tour of my fall and winter accessories collection, including bags, boots, belts, and hats. But this isn't going to be a fluffy tour, it's going to be detailed because that's how I can help you learn what makes for accessories that will complement your style. Instead of the generic black, white, and beige outfits with random logos from overpriced brands, you'll see how I've narrowed my accessories collection to improve my personal style. I'll give you style and shopping tips throughout the video, but watch until the end for my number one tip when you're shopping for accessories so you can be confident in your purchases. I have five pieces in each category to show you. Let's get started with my favorite. I know you're not supposed to have a favorite child, but everyone does, and this is my favorite right now. This is my Tory Burch shoulder bag that I've been wearing a lot this fall, and the details are exquisite and complex. The material is a woven jacquard. Do you pronounce it jacquard or jacquard? Because apparently both are correct. Woven into the jacquard is a flocked velvet and fill coupe embroidery done in a basket weave motif. Fill coupe is French for cut threads, which gives it this intriguing tactile experience. Anyway, the reason why this handbag has been my favorite lately is because I've been wearing a lot of solid colors, which I tend to do in my fall and winter outfits, a lot more solids than like in the spring and summer when I'm wearing floral patterns. So this has added a bit of pattern to my outfits, making it much more interesting. And the more closely you look at this bag, the more you realize all the craftsmanship that went into it, the details that were combined. To create a bag that isn't a minimalist bag at all, it's very much an artistic combination of all these different details that make it very interesting and add so much more interest to an outfit. And I think it can be very interesting no. with... This bag is my most worn bag for the last couple of years. This is Baguette and she's from Paris, so she's an immigrant. The internet has named her the dumpling bag for obvious reasons, but her French name is Pelin Numero Neuf. Yeah. Oh damn, hold up! That's a French ass name, Yvonne. Yeah, my little croissant. That is French for number nine. Now, what I like about this bag is that I really appreciate value. I appreciate paying less than what I think I'm getting in quality. And I feel like this bag could be a thousand dollar or two thousand dollar designer handbag, but the Palen label just isn't well known. This bag is designed in Paris and crafted in Spain, just like many of those luxury brands, but without the luxury price tag. If I'm being honest, the reason why I like this bag is that it's just enough without being too much. In the sense of it has so much character because of the architecture of it, but it doesn't have too much character that it would need to have a more neutral outfit. So I can wear this with a lot of my more interesting outfits and it doesn't steal the show, but it certainly adds more personality, which I really appreciate about each piece of my wardrobe. Several people have asked me if this handbag is worth it and if I would repurchase it if I were doing it over again, and the answer is a resounding yes. Not only has it been a heavy hitter for my outfits, but it's also just a quality and color that I will appreciate for hopefully decades. This is undoubtedly my cheapest handbag, which I bought for about $20 back in 2018. This is an evening clutch with a little fabric row detail, but my favorite part of it is that it is a velvet. It's a more basic piece, but when it comes to evening wear, I really like the dress to shine, so I need my accessories to add a little bit, but not too much. And this one does the job well. So my tip for you if you're buying evening accessories is think about do you want them to be the star of the show or do you want them to fade into the background while your dress or some other piece of your outfit is the star of the show. This has been very helpful in my wardrobe with evening wear and it's my go-to evening clutch. This next clutch is a chocolate brown crocodile print Brahmin clutch, very simple looking, but it adds a little bit of texture to my outfits when I wear it and that's what I appreciate about it. I think I received this as a gift in 2019 and it's gotten a lot of wear. 
I recently looked at the price for this because I've been linking it in my videos and I think I wouldn't pay full price for this. I would buy it on sale, but the reason I wouldn't pay full price is because I think they're relying on the legacy brand name to justify the price. And as far as quality, I think that brands like Palen, the smaller, more independent brands, are doing a better job at giving a higher quality at a lower price point. So that's just my opinion. I would buy this if it were on sale, but probably not full price. This last bag isn't a clutch, but when it comes to casual outfits, it comes in clutch. This is my casual crossbody bag that I have from Tory Burch. I think I bought this in 2018 and I have worn it hundreds of times. I probably wear it three times a week. And I'm not ordinarily someone who just loves logos, but I appreciate with Tory Burch's bags that a lot of times you can't really tell it's a logo. It just looks like a medallion print, or in this case, a chain link print. And it adds a little bit of texture and pattern to an outfit without being that really obnoxious head to toe Louis Vuitton print. At the beginning of the year, I started looking at this bag a little bit differently. It started feeling outdated, especially the thin leather strap that it came with as a crossbody bag. But I was inspired by a Pinterest post to change out the strap and see how I liked it. I found one on Etsy for I think around $20 and this has given new life to this handbag. I can wear it with the leather strap to look a little bit more chic or I can wear it with the sporty strap to have a little bit more casual of an outfit. My shopping tip for the bags category is to find a purchase that you really like. Wow, cool a bag. I look inside. Okay. Wow, cool a bag. Do you like it? Hello, I'm a girl, it's a purse. Last winter, I bought a black handbag and I also sold it on Poshmark last winter. But I learned from that that I need to buy pieces that excite me, either the style, the color, the quality, preferably all three, because the more practical pieces just kind of bore me and tend to collect dust. That might be a character flaw, but before we travel too far into my psyche, let's move on to the next accessory. This first pair of booties are my favorite. These are burgundy block heel booties from Tory Burch. And I purchased these this year to go along with that Tory Burch handbag. I feel like they go so well together. I've also been looking for a red tone boot for several years and I finally found a pair that were the right quality and price point for me. Here's a shopping tip. If you're not finding the quality you want at the price point you want, try buying in the off season. Either anticipate your needs for the upcoming season or shop when the season is over. And that way you can get the higher quality pieces at a lower price point. But that means you're going to have to know what is going to endure in your closet, which means understanding your personal style better. I know that these are going to fit in my closet for many years because number one, this is a color that has been a staple in my wardrobe for many years. Number two, they are very comfortable. They have a square toe, which works for my toe shape a lot better than the pointy toed boots. And number three, it's such a great quality leather that it will last as long as I take care of it. While I'm happy with buying a statement piece like booties, you might need something more neutral and that's what I bought last year. These are black leather booties that I bought from Thursday Boots last year and they're such good quality. They've really formed well to my foot shape over the last season and these are such a great style for a number of reasons. Now when choosing between boots and booties it can be kind of a chore to figure out which one am I going to wear more and will it go with enough of my closet that it's worth the in <sighs> Which one am I going to wear more and will it go with enough of my closet that it's worth the in that it's worth the purchase price. And one thing you need to consider is whether you're wearing them with more dresses and skirts or more with jeans and pants. Booties look best with pants or jeans and that's what I use these for. I like that it has a nice tall shaft so I can wear my jeans that are cropped and it comes below the shaft so there's not a color blocking of my skin color which is going to make me look shorter. And because it has a tighter shaft, I can wear it with like straight leg jeans but I wouldn't want to wear straight leg jeans with a larger shaft booty because it's going to bunch up the jeans. So you just need to consider what type of jeans and pants you're wearing, or if you're wearing dresses or skirts, maybe opt for knee high boots. 
These next babies are the star of the show. <laughs> These are Fuchsia Velvet booties from Betsy Johnson. Yeah, Betsy Johnson, of course. I mean, who else would make this heel? I bought these boots in 2020. I think they were a birthday present for my husband to me, but you know I picked them out. And although it's a bit obnoxious and not something I can wear with every outfit, I have zero regrets about these because I've worn them so many times. They add such character to my outfits and they're really comfortable because they have a block heel instead of a stiletto. I was into the stiletto game in my 20s and I'll don stiletto heels for like a special occasion for one day, but on a regular basis, I'm only ever wearing block heels. So these are really comfortable but they're also cute and add a lot of pizzazz and I absolutely love them. Moving on to knee-high boots. Hey. hey, so what do you think? New haircut? Necklace? Dress? Boots? Boots! <laughs> I have a black suede pair and a brown smooth leather pair. So let me show you the details of this black suede pair. These are from Sam Edelman and they're knee high. The suede material is obviously very lovely. If you're choosing between suede and smooth leather when it comes to your boots, I would say to go for the texture that you're missing. So if you're wearing it with jeans, then maybe go for a shiny leather. But if you're wearing it with a silk or satin dress, then go for a suede leather. These have a two inch, nope, two and a half inch heel, but it makes them very walkable. They, I've worn these boots with so many outfits over the years. They're so versatile. Although this exact pair isn't available anymore, Sam Edelman makes a very similar one that I will link down below. It's available in black suede, black shiny leather, brown suede, brown shiny leather, and I think some other fun colors as well. The last pair I wanna show you are brown leather knee-high boots with probably a three inch block heel and a pointy toe. These are not my most comfortable boots. These are my least comfortable boots, but they're kind of dressy, so they're not boots that I would necessarily wear walking around anyway. And they look so cute with a lot of the dresses that I wear. Now, one thing I want to point out is that a lot of times with boots, you'll see the seams in places that make it look a little bit cheap. I really don't like seeing the seam of a boot up the front of the leg. I think it just looks like they were being cheap with the fabric. So instead, I would like to see the seam of the boot in the back or on the inner leg. When I was shopping for boots before, I used to get overwhelmed by all these styles and colors and options, but I've learned that you don't need all the different styles to have better style. What you need is a wardrobe that really works for you. So how do you decide what boots to purchase? Are you wearing boots mostly with jeans and pants or mostly with skirts and dresses? And if it's jeans and pants, I would recommend booties. If it's skirts and dresses, I would recommend taller boots. Now that you know the style you want, determine the type of heel that you want. I personally prefer a little bit of height with my boots and a block heel, but the trending style for this year and a few years past has been the flat riding boot, and that is going to be the most comfortable if you're on your feet a lot. Next, decide what color looks best with your current wardrobe. Do you need a pop of color? Do you need black or brown? Which one works best with your wardrobe? So don't go out thinking you need to buy every style of boot and every color. You really just need the pairs that work for you. When you shop for boots, you'll notice a huge difference in quality and price. While I cannot explain why some boots are over $1,000, I can tell you that my more expensive boots are 100% leather in a very good leather like half skin with a leather lining. And my cheaper boots are a lower grade leather with a synthetic lining or just altogether synthetic like the velvet material. Now here's a tip if you have booties and you want to wear them with dresses or skirts, just wear some stockings that are the same color as the boot and it kind of gives the look of a knee-high boot. What you want to avoid is showing your skin color as a color block between the boot shaft and the skirt hemline. Instead, you can wear stockings that are the same color as the boot, and that's just going to give a continual line as if you're wearing some tall boots, creating length and cohesion in your outfit. But what if you have knee-high boots and you need to wear them with jeans or pants? This is when you pull out your old skinny jeans and wear them with your boots. 
Although it's a trending style to wear the baggier style jeans with tall boots, I don't think that's really flattering on most people. So unless you're a style maven, then probably stick to skinny jeans or straight leg jeans paired with your tall boots. These are all the belts I want to show you. I want to give you two pants options, two dresses options, and two that can go either way. This is a really classic type of belt. This is one that I'll probably wear for a decade or more. This is a black leather belt with a pebble detail. It's the perfect width for pants and it does have a little pop of something interesting. It has this artsy belt buckle. And although I don't wear this one a lot, it's something that will last in my wardrobe for decades because it's a good quality and it's a classic piece. The next trouser belt that I have is the one I'm wearing right now. I just want to show you the difference between this one and a previous purchase that I also, I do wear this one regularly, but look at the difference in these colors and styles. It's a tough call. They're so different. Mm. <laughs> Something funny? This one has this darker chocolate color and this one's more of a caramel brown. On top of that, you've got more gold hardware on this one and then you've got the leather covered buckle on this one, which just gives it a more seamless look if it's not really supposed to make a statement in the wardrobe. It really depends on the outfit, whether I would wear the covered buckle that's more seamless or the more jewelry-like buckle. These are a couple of belts I would only wear with dresses, most likely. <laughs> this first one has been very popular. Y'all always ask for links for this one. I'll link a similar one down in the description box, but be forewarned, this is not the cheapest belt I've ever bought. This is a leather wrap style belt, and it's so cute. It's just like a little addition to a dress, especially if it's a more plain dress, a more solid color like black and it's a lot of material, it's a maxi dress. This adds that little extra oomph to the outfit. And I've worn this so many occasions, zero regrets about the price of this one. The next one is a new one from Bowden and this is more of a mustard color with a caramel wrap leather detail. And it has this little, look at this little braid. That is stinking cute. I think this one is a two inch belt. So this wouldn't fit on most of my trousers, but I wear this one for dresses and it just has a lot of detail. So if an outfit is really falling flat, this one's going to do it for me. Lastly, I have my two most popular belts based on what I've seen people buy from the links. And these are both statement belts. They're available in a variety of colors. Um, they're both suede but this one has a rosette buckle. Gorgeous, right, 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 very romantic. And this one has a Western buckle with a little bit more detail, like the engraving and such, like that is really gorgeous. I was a little hesitant buying a lavender belt because I don't have any other lavender in my closet, but it's complimentary to the pink and red and purple outfits that I wear. So if you're deciding on a pop of color for a belt, try to find one that either complements your wardrobe in the tonal sense, or it's the exact opposite on the color wheel. If you're wearing a lot of blue jean outfits, then an orange tinted brown leather belt is going to give you that extra little spice to your outfit. My advice for you when you're shopping for a belt is similar to what I just said about boots. You do not need every color, every style, and if you buy a belt that is only going to match one type of outfit, then you'll probably end up with a lot more belts than you wanted to purchase. So here are details to consider before buying your belt. To determine the size, do you need it to fit your waist or your high hip? Which for my outfits is deciding between whether it's for dresses or pants. For dresses, I like my belts to fit at my natural waist, which is higher than my pants line. To determine the color, do you need a brown or black, or maybe even a reversible belt? And if it's a brown color, is it a warm tone or a cold tone? And what color hardware? Gold, silver, or something else? Now to determine thickness, if it's for your waist, do you want a skinny belt or a more thick belt? 
If it's for your high hips, is it a skinny belt or a regular, which is generally like one and a quarter or one and a half inches. There's this old style rule that if you are thicker, you wanna wear a thinner belt like a skinny belt. And if you're thinner, you wanna wear a thicker belt like maybe two, three inches width. And I personally don't ascribe to that for my style. I have some belts that are an inch width and some that are three inches and it really just depends on the outfit and what it calls for. So play around with it and see what you like. Maybe you like one style or one width of belt or maybe you would like a variety. I think style is supposed to be fun. So just play around with it and see what you like best. Now here's a style solution if you've ever had the problem of your belt not being the right length. You can either permanently adjust the size of your belt with a hole puncher, and this is a leather hole puncher that you can buy on Amazon, but if you want a temporary fix, use double-sided fashion tape, and that's what I use for a lot of my belts that can be for pants or dresses. I just put a piece of tape, and it helps that belt to just stay in place all day. Hats are a funny little divisive piece in the fashion sphere. Some people love them, some people like them on others but hate them on themselves, and some people just flat right are just not into hats. Now, I don't know where you stand, but I obviously love my hats. I have a number of fedoras, and when I first started wearing them, I thought I couldn't really pull it off. It just didn't look right on me, and that's because a decade ago, the floppy short brimmed hat that kind of looks like a little farmer hat, that was trending. But once I started moving into the more modern updated hats that look better for my style, I really started getting into them. They're such a statement piece. So I want to show you my fedoras and the details that make them work well for my outfits and then give you some tips on how to wear hats well. Starting with this black fedora, I think it's such a classic piece. It's a velvet material and it has a really stiff brim. This fedora is like a staple in the hat world. It's just your basic black fedora, but the quality of it is one that is going to last for many, many years. And that's why I think it's worth the price point. Got a brown velvet hat band on this one. It has some pretty little gold jewelry in the back. This next hat is my most worn hat. It's a brown straw fedora. I tend to wear this one more in spring, summer, and fall, but because of the richness of the color, I'll definitely still be wearing it with my winter outfits. This one has such beautiful, rich texture. It's just eye-catching. And on top of that, it came with this cute little hat band that is leather and has these little brass accents but sometimes I switch out the hat band that it came with and add one of my little scarves that are such versatile pieces as well. It adds a little bit of pattern to the outfit and it's something that adds a personal detail. I guarantee you that nobody else has this exact scarf on their hat because the scarf wasn't really made for the hat, <laughs> but I like that about it. My style ethic is that it's not about having more clothes, it's really about how you're wearing them. And the more versatility you have, the more you can create combinations, the more personal your style is going to look. Now this one, this was the hat that started it all. I think I got this one from Target and it was maybe $30 or so, but Look how flimsy, yep, it's from Target. Look how flimsy it is. That's what makes it not a very good quality hat. The crown comes up, you know, it's just not, it's not the best quality. However, if you're just starting wearing hats and you're not sure how it's going to go, you can go to the thrift store and buy this for probably a few dollars and see how you like it before you purchase up. I also made this more customized to me, so it's a unique look. There's nobody else that has this because I went to Hobby Lobby. I bought some ribbon, some rope, and just made my own little hat band, which adds a little bit more Western personality, a little detail to an outfit that otherwise wouldn't have that. I'm glad I purchased this because it started my interest in wearing fedoras, but this is not one that gets worn that much anymore. This, however, <laughs> I will give you one guess where this came from. It's from an amusement park by a legendary country singer. That's right, it's from Dollywood, of course. I mean, who else would sell this hat? It's perfect. 
This is probably a mid price point hat. I think this one was around 50 or $60. And you can tell that the crown is more stiff, so it's more durable, but the brim isn't, so I do have to be a little bit more delicate with this one. But it really was the color. I, I needed this color. I added my own little hat band to this. It has this velvet ribbon with a frayed edge, along with this Art Deco style ribbon on top. I just love customizing my clothing in a way that feels like me. It feels personal. And this hat was actually inspired by a hotel in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I used to live. And this is the hat version of my fuchsia velvet boots. It's not the most practical thing. It doesn't go with every outfit, but it's that little extra pop of personality that I love. Those are all of my fall and winter fedoras. I have one last hat to show you. This is a paperboy cap that I got from Gigi Pip. I think it's gonna be a good one. We'll see, we'll see how much I wear this. But one thing that I observed when I was watching the fashion weeks for fall and winter is that the paperboy cap is back in style. And I think this is the third time in my lifetime that this has been in style. So is it really ever out of style? I don't know. But when it comes to accessories, I think it's most important to let your style speak. Don't let the trends dictate whether you wear an accessory or don't wear an accessory. You can allow trends to give you a resurgence of ideas when it comes to accessories. That's definitely what happened with my fedoras. I didn't like the older style, the more modern style I do like. You can let the trends give you new ideas for accessories, but don't just stop wearing it because it's not trendy. Now that you've seen my hat collection, here's my tip when it comes to wearing hats. A lot of times people think that hats are supposed to be something to help you cover up and blend into the background, but fedoras are not. Fedoras are eye-catching. Because most people are not wearing headwear, anytime you wear something on your head, a headband, a hat, a ball cap, it's going to bring a little bit more attention. So number one, do your hair. If you have a four day old hair and it's crusty and you think you can cover it up with a hat, it's probably going to make you look not as good as you think it will. A beanie. What's that? A hat? Crazy, funky, junky hat or sucked? Hair tightly? Trying to look like Kira Knightley? We've been there, we've done that. We see right through your funky hat. So just sleek it back into a bun or a ponytail and then pop the hat on top. Secondly, wear eye brightening makeup. Because you're blocking the light from coming towards your eyes, you're going to see those dark under eye circles a little bit more pronounced. So instead, just wear more brightening eye makeup and that will help you look better wearing your hats. My last tip for wearing hats is to sandwich the colors, which means wear the same color hat as shoes and that will make the outfit look more cohesive. Now I promised at the beginning of the video I would give you my number one tip for when you're shopping for accessories. And this tip applies to fall, winter, and spring, summer. It's a year round tip. And that is to create coordinated accessory sets. Trademark it, copyright 2023 Prisca Jordan. Coordinating accessory sets does not mean you have to go to the same store and buy the same style in handbag, belts, shoes, and hats. What it means is that you have a set that naturally complements each other. So it doesn't need to be matchy-matchy, just complementary. And that allows you to wake up in the morning, put together your outfit, and grab an entire set of accessories that you've previously matched together. That will help eliminate decision fatigue as you're getting dressed, and it will help you to purchase accessories that already go with the wardrobe that you have. Tell me in the comments, which color of accessories do you tend to wear the most? I'm curious, is it brown, black, red, any other color? Let me know down in the comments. And since you enjoyed this video, I recommend you watching this one next. I'll see you next week with a brand new video, but until then, take care.